you will be able to ask question and answers in this session, so just feel free to type in and chat or raise your hand, and, and I'll take a look at that. I would like to introduce Ellen Efros, who will be introducing our speaker for today. One moment here. Good morning, everyone. Um, I know we must have a lot of people on Zoom. Um, I am pleased that I think this might be the first time we've had a live presenter here um, in the past almost two years. And I'm very pleased that Mark was able to join us this morning. I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that there aren't more people in the Oak Room because this is an interactive um, presentation. Um, Mark has been, um, I would say teaching, but that's probably the wrong word. Let's say he has been presenting um, this course, which is intended to improve the art of communication and conversation among different people. He has uh, done this course at the Senior Center since they reopened. He is a member of um, the Round Table, which he doesn't go to regularly, but he has gone to. And his goal is to improve communications between and among people who are attempting to talk to one another. And with that introduction, I will turn this over to Mark. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Mark Olson. Uh, here this morning, just wanted to welcome everybody, say hello. Um, pleased that you would join us here. Um, this is about uh, talking. We'll, we'll go, kind of go through a program. Should take uh, an hour or less uh, talking with people uh, here in the Oak Room. And if you are uh, through Zoom, if you have somebody else there that you can talk with, uh, I will be asking some questions so that you can communicate with somebody that's there with you, or uh, you'll just kind of have to try to imagine it out of your head how it would be if you were uh, actually with some someone and talking about these items. Uh, we'll talk about um, conversation mostly. Um, we'll take you through through some examples of maybe some bad conversations or things that can go wrong in conversation. Uh, and like uh, Ellen had mentioned, uh, we like to try to work on our conversations, improve our conversations with our family and friends. And we think that life gets better as your communication and your conversation gets better in your life. Uh, so with that in mind, um, if you have a partner, I'm going to uh, zoom out for just a second. We have a few people here that are here in person. So I will be talking with them. Uh, it'll take probably about uh, two or three minutes, and then I'll be back with you, and we'll proceed um, through the next segment. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, in the in the microphone. Yeah, uh, I'm with some uh, some other people over here that have, have joined us in the circle. Uh, so what we'll try to do is probably try to pair pair up in pairs. Uh, since you two are kind of sitting close together, why don't I get you to kind of form a pair? Uh, one, why don't we form a pair over here and we'll just talk for a few minutes? Hmm? Yes. Yes, that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to come over and, and join us over here, or or, or stay there? You, we can talk in three or whatever. But the, this is just kind of an introduction. Say, you know, tell tell them your name, uh, kind of what you're doing here, and just kind of say hello, and make a little small talk. So I'm going to sh shift over here with Richard. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well. Yeah, I'm uh, Dick Suter. I'm, uh, I've been uh, 
involved in the ILR for a long time, and uh, and I'm I'm in, just interested in the subject to see what uh, what what you want to talk about. Uh, other than that, I don't know what to say. Shall I pass? Shall I pass this on? To I'm Betty Jacobson, and I've been here for ten years, eleven years, and I um, I enjoy all the ILR classes, and I'm glad that you're here in person. That's nice. Okay. I'm Ken Hanley. I'm a resident of Gainesville. I don't live at Oak Hammock, but I've been coming to your courses for a long, long time, and. I have so appreciated the educational con, uh, content of them, and uh, my wife got me coming to them, and it's just wonderful, just just so wonderful. I've appreciated them so much. So. Good morning. My name is Bill Rossi. I am a resident of Oak Hammock. I've been here for three years. <clears throat> uh, actually, one of the reasons that I was moved to move here is the prospect for continuing learning. Uh, I think it's good. I love it. Uh, I take a lot of the ILR courses. I'm on the ILR board now. Um, and I love everything about it. This course is interesting to me. I like last week's uh, course in this sort of potpourri. Uh, it was on storytelling. Uh, and as a teacher, that's essentially what you do. Um, and I'm actually anxious to uh, take part in today's session to find ways to improve conversations. Hi, I'm Jan Lowenthal. I live here at Okamic. I've been here five years. Uh, I agree with Bill totally. Part of the reason I am here at Okamic is because of the intellectual uh, challenges. I sign up for practically all the ILR classes. I try to get to as many as I can. Uh, sometimes there's just too many other things going on at OCAMIC. Uh, I got thinking about last week's, and you talked primarily about illness and death, but there also were on the life disruptors, divorce and uh, changes and so even though I didn't feel as though some of my traumatic experiences didn't ha have to do with death or even minor kind of illnesses, although I did miss learning the multiplication tables because I was out during when they were teaching it. <laughs> I think it was two or three illnesses in a row, like mumps and measles and what else. But um, I got back and everybody knew the multiplication tables and I had to catch up. But anyway, I do enjoy this and I think we can all benefit from uh, holding conversations and improving our skills. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I'm going to leave the, the group and uh, come back over here and talk a little bit more for Zoom, and then we'll um, do the same thing over again. Um, so uh, it's, it's been shown that people with better social skills are um, more successful in life relationships and in business. Um, and I wanted to, to talk with the group, or maybe you can think to yourself, um, how, how would you rate your, your own personal social skills? Um, are you already where you want to be as a social person? Are you as social as you'd like to get? Or are you still trying to learn some new skills? Um, uh, and have, have you ever, uh, have you always enjoyed social talking? Have you always enjoyed communicating? Or has it been something that has gradually come up to you as you get older? So think about that. Uh, people on Zoom, I'll go back over here with the uh, group and we'll talk in a group. And Mark, let's clarify, we're not going to pass the mic for all of this. You're, we just did the introduction, but now at home and here in the Oak Room, we'll have these conversations yeah. privately. Yeah, I think what I'd like to do once again is try to get, uh, we, we do um, 
talk well in group, but you don't get as much talking time. So once again, I'd like to try to uh, at least pair up people and talk one-on-one -on -one so you get more of an opportunity to talk and share. So let's, let's try to ask, uh, like one of the, answer one of the questions, uh, anyone that you care to, have you always enjoyed social talking or has this been something that's come on you later in life? Where do you think your social skills are? Would you like to get better? Uh, those kinds of things. So just talk amongst ourselves and then we'll get back in about two or three minutes. Okay, we're back again. We're talking about a little bit about um, uh, going to an area that may be a little bit uncomfortable, talking about bad conversations. So I imagine that everybody in their life has had a bad conversation. Um, uh, but having a bad conversation is kind of not as obvious as uh, having bad fashion sense trying to uh, pair polka dots with plaids or something like that. Uh, but what, actu what qualities actually makes for bad conversations? So that would be the next area that we'd talk about uh, in groups where you can kind of imagine some of the things that may come up, like maybe someone interrupted you too much, maybe someone talked too much, didn't let you talk. But let's go into some of the areas that we can think of that kind of leads to bad conversations, and then we'll come back a little bit later and talk maybe about some qualities that make up good conversations. Thanks. Okay, so yeah, just continue on with your conversation. Think of something that makes a quality that makes a bad conversation. Anne-Marie, do you have a question? Uh, no, I thought he was going to entertain questions from us about uh, oh, what yeah, makes a bad can. conversation. Hold on. Um, can we pause for just one moment? We have a question here, okay. Mark. No, it, hi. Go ahead, Amory. Um, I, well, I thought you were asking a question about um, what we thought um, made for bad conversations, and I just had a, a comment to start. Go, go ahead. Oh, okay, you can hear me, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the things I've discovered um, since COVID, and I think it may be because so many people are so eager to share information, is that um, you're trying to have a conversation with somebody and find out who they are. Um, but what they do is they kind of let loose um, what it is that's been going on, and they never, and I mean never, ask questions you have to interrupt them in order to say anything so i find that it's it's a very um it takes a lot more skills than i think i have <laughs> yeah thanks for that comment yeah i think that that'd be a, a situation where you're having a bad conversation you'd like to have it better but uh the other person is just kind of rambling on um i'm i'm not sure i have an instant solution for that uh, but it's it's an experience that i think most of us have had recently, especially with COVID. So. Okay, um, I'm back with the uh, Zoomers now. Uh, hopefully you've, you've uh, thought about or talked with somebody about uh, some of the aspects or traits that may come up with bad conversations. Um, we talked to uh, some somebody putting you down or making you feel inferior or something. Uh, another another thing is if you're very curious and somebody doesn't want to answer your questions, that can kind of be a bad conversational trait. Um, so uh, moved into a segment now on skills. It seems that we have uh, in our society we have a lot of critics. We have food critics. 
that uh, talk about food and kind of uh, have some aspects of what makes good food makes bad food. We have movie critics that will um, talk about a movie, a film that is rated good or bad, or things about films that are rated good or bad. Uh, but we don't have uh, very many conversation critics to uh, talk about uh, what skills make up good conversation. So that's one of the things that we try to do in a conversation class is to look at skills that en enhance conversation and skills that, that take away from having good conversations. Um, and so one of the ones that I'll throw out that we, we talk about is that in conversations, what you're trying, the number one basic skill in conversations is uh, taking turns uh, and giving, giving everyone approximately equal chance to talk. So that's one of the ones that we talk about. So if you can um, talk with your partner or think of, I've given you one skill, what is another skill uh, that you, what is another skill that you've tried to learn yourself, not necessarily with conversation, but just in your life. So we're talking about skills a little bit. Thanks. Uh, another, another skill, just, just to kind of once again, uh, once again, just to kind of get you talking with each other, is talk about another skill that you may have learned in your life, not necessarily with conversation, but say that you learned gardening, say that you learned to um, macrame, you know, just some other skill that you learned, and talk about some other skill that you learned. Yeah. Yes, yes, something else in your life that you tried to learn, some other skill. Hi, back again, uh, Mark. We're talking uh, previously about skills, so uh, sharing with your partner. Uh, it wasn't uh, so much about conversational skills, but just the process of, of learning, you know, trying to, trying to get into something that you're, you're, you think you may have an interest in. How do you go about it? Do you, do you read books? Do you talk to people? What, what do you do to go through the learning process? So even in conversation, there are there's what I call big skills or basic skills, and then there's a whole lot of little tips, tricks, and techniques that you can go into also. So uh, if, you're, if you want to come out and try to learn some of these things, there's a lot of areas to go into to improve your conversations with your friends, relatives, neighbors, whatever. Um, so that get, gets, gets us on to a segment about change. Um, you may have heard uh, some of the jokes going around a few years back about uh, uh, the light bulb jokes. So one of the jokes I liked was uh, how many therapists does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer is just one, but the light bulb has really got to want to change. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, in all areas of life, it seems like we, we, want, to, we, we want to make a change, or we think we want to make a change, but it sometimes is difficult to to get uh, the initiative to do it. And, and especially in conversation, it seems like we all have an internal narrative about our conversation. Um, uh, I don't, you know, basically kind of goes something like this. I don't need to change the way I talk. I've been talking this way ever since I was young. I've been talking my whole life. Why, why do I need to make any changes? Um, and yet, I think just by being here, tuning in, uh, you have expressed at least an openness to looking at the way that you converse with people and your conversational skills. So that's, I applaud you for that and I uh, thank you for your time. And uh, but so uh, let's get back with our uh, partners again or with our imagination. Um, the area that we're going to talk about is uh, um, share something with your partner that you recently changed in your life and not, not necessarily with conversation, but just some change that you brought about in your life. So we're talking about change. Any changes?
have changed. Uh, it, 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 uh, it relates to health. You know, it's, uh, oh, okay. So it's, it's sort of something that happened, not something that you consciously did. Yeah. 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 Does, does it help in the, in, in the activity? <laughs> yeah, well, we had to go into the hospital and uh, that sort of thing. So, so that's, uh, that, that's a big change, but it's not something that I really will. Okay, Mark, uh, back here with uh, everybody in the room and the Zoomers. Uh, so we talked a little bit about change. Hopefully, um, you know, talking with my partner, we've had some negative changes in our life, the things that changed that we didn't, you know, proactively become involved with, but we've had to adapt to. Um, and then we have some other things that are, you know, positive changes or things that we want to bring about that we uh, try to take some actions in to make come come about. Um, so we're kind of getting toward the end of the presentation here. Uh, uh, this segment is on rewards and benefits and results and payoffs. And um, I guess one of, the, one of the things that got me started in trying to change some of my conversational skills was a, a Harvard uh, article that I read uh, about um, uh, longevity. people that seem to, to lead a long, healthy life are people that have better social contacts and better social networks. And I think one of the, the skills that's involved in your social network is obviously your conversational skills that you use so much in, in going out to meals with people or talking with family and friends. So that's kind of what got me interested in uh, improving conversational skills. And hopefully our group can move to work on those conversational skills and improve your life through your conversational skills. Um, so if you want to um, get back with your partner, and one of the things to look at is, um, uh, is your social, uh, social support network. So the question I ask at this stage is, do you feel that you have a strong social support network, and how would you describe your social support network? Hi, I hope you had a chance to talk with uh, your partner about uh, your social support network. And I, I, hope it's, I hope it's a good one. I hope you're uh, working on it uh, and uh, have good relationships in your life with your social support network. Um, so um, I guess uh, tes testimonials about uh, improving your conversational skills, there's some pretty uh, big ones out there that I've learned about through my life is uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, obviously had a, uh, a big impact on uh, society back in the 30s and 40s. Uh, recently, there was some other ones that have come up, the whole life coaching uh, techniques. There's also some famous ones. Alan Alda of MASH has written some books on, on the importance of uh, social contacts in academia. And then some of my favorites, I have some books over on the table, an author called Lil, Lil Lowndes and one called Gregory Pert that wrote the uh, conversation code on conversation techniques. So um, that was basically the, uh, the program that I had today. Uh, this once again was uh, trying to give you an idea of what a conversation group would be like. Uh, we'd like to form a group at some, peop at some point and get people to come out and participate, uh, hopefully in person, but also we, we can try to do them through Zoom. Uh, if you if you like this, enjoyed it, or thought it would have some uh, interest to you, uh, hopefully we'll be doing another one in a couple weeks, and hopefully after that we can try to form a group that will be an ongoing, continuing group that will be talking about conversation. Yeah, just to repeat, um, April 4th will be the second of this series, and we'd love for our ILR town members to feel free to come in to the Oak Room, and we can really see some more engagement in the conversation. I know that the group here, we've had to keep them, we've had to make them stop talking so that Mark could get back to the Zoom screen. That's the idea. <laughs> That's the idea, yeah. Mark, thank you very much for coming today. 
Um, for those of you um, who haven't seen Julie's newsflash um, and live in the town or close to the um, close to Okamek, you are now invited to come and sit in the Oak Room and participate as we used to do before COVID. Um, so I would hope for the next presentation, we have more people in the Oak Room because it's hard to do an interactive program such as Mark has in mind without participants in the Oak Room. So for all of those who live close or in town, who we call the townies, um, this is the first time we've opened this up to people who do not live at Oak Hammock. So please think about dropping Zoom at this point and putting on your regular clothes and not your pajamas, although you can come in your pajamas if you want to. And coming to Mark's sec second session. And I think we have a question over here. You're a townie. Good for you. Good for you. Um, are there any other questions on Zoom, Julie? Any, any other questions from the Zoom audience? No. Thank, thank you for uh, showing up and participating. Right. Mark, thank you very much.